I did fashion shows. I did New York, London, Paris, but it was more serious and avant-garde. I just didn't do anything sexy prior to Victoria's Secret. I grew up um, between the Cayman Islands and New York, so I got to see a little bit of everything. Growing up, everyone said I looked like a praying mantis <laughs> or an alien or just weird. I just thought that it was unique and I was it was something cool about myself. I would tell my mom I want to be a model, but I didn't know anything about modeling. It just seemed like a, just a fantasy. When I was 15, I went to a modeling agency. They said I was too short. I didn't know of a Kate Moss. I didn't know she was 5'7", and she was like this huge British supermodel. But when I did, I said, okay, wait, I'm not gonna give up. At 17 years old, I was walking through a turnstile in Jersey, and I was scouted, and the universe took a hold of me, and I just ran with it. My first big gig was Abercrombie and & Fitch, and it was very exciting because it was where I learned that there was like a day rate, and that's how models were paid. It was for a decent amount of money. For a 17-year-old, I was like, I'm rich, this is amazing. But it was filming in Santa Barbara. My dad was like, heck no. And I pleaded, please let me go, let me go. He let me go, but little did I know he came as well. Let's just say on day three, I was asked to shoot on a horse, a little nude. My dad knocked on the door of my hotel room the night before and said, pack your stuff, we're leaving. <laughs> So I did not finish that campaign. I was still in the campaign, but I, let's just say I did not ride any horses. Years later, my agent called me and she said, could I go to this last minute audition? I went and it was for Victoria's Secret. It's funny because I didn't know anything about Victoria's Secret. I was everything but sexy in my career at that time. I went in the room and it was a simple audition of uh, simple lines that's read, I IPEX, do you IPEX? I'm pretty sure I said a lot better back then. I got a call the next day that said I got the commercial. Next thing you know, I'm flying to California and I'm on set sitting next to Giselle Bundchen. Then suddenly she gets on the stage and she's posing and I'm just in awe. I'm just like, look at this woman. Who gets the opportunity to work and learn from, you know, in person with one of like the the biggest supermodels in the world. I got a call the next week. They offered me the contract to follow Tyra Banks as the next Victoria's Secret Angel. It was a light switch in my career. It literally went from 20 castings a day, the hustle and bustle, to now being exclusively signed to Victoria's Secret. I did get to work with Tyra Banks in 2005, the, her last Victoria's Secret fashion show. And of course, Giselle Bundchen, Heidi Klum, Adriana Lima, Miranda Kerr, Isabel Goulart, of course, Carolina Kakova. That was the best show I think any model will say to walk in. It was the next level, and I was just humbled to be a part of that. You know, there were other black models when we would do catalog work or at the show itself, but to have the weight of being the contracted Victoria's Secret black model was overwhelming. I didn't understand how one person can represent a whole race. Like, that to me just was ri ridiculous. Now the outside world is looking at you and saying, oh, well, she's not this, and she she should be this, or maybe she could be more of this. It was mentally very, very hard, but I had such a great support system in my family and friends. Now I reflect and it's, I'm extremely humbled and thankful for that opportunity and I just hope I make more people proud than anything. I like to say that I come from the Polaroid era of fashion and I got to see how we evolved into digital. Um, if you know, you know. It's a breath of fresh air. When it comes to style, there's never a uniform. You can wear whatever you want. No one has to approve it but you. You know, you have to walk in this life. And so I, it's an everyday thing. At the end of the day, it's about building confidence and empowering young women and men, whether it's through the foster care programs or through the hospital and schools all the way in Sierra Leone. And even in my own country, you know, creating mentorship programs and working with young people directly and just helping encourage them to be their best versions of themselves.